Hi, I'm here to talk to you about the RealityWorks Infant Vital Signs Trainer. This trainer is beneficial for students who are looking to work with children. So what I'm going to be going over today is I will be going over uh, the trainer itself, what you're going to see when you first open it, all the items that it includes, and how to use the device itself. The Infant Vital Signs Trainer uh, makes practicing taking basic infant vital signs and conducting newborn physical assessments consistent and realistic. It includes comprehensive curriculum plus 15 scenarios written by practicing pediatricians that is used to help students understand both normal and abnormal vital signs. I'm going to go ahead and open up the trainer and show you the individual pieces and parts that you will see when you first open it up. So you'll have the actual infant vital signs trainer, the baby itself, at the infant vital signs storage case. You will have, in inside this box, you'll have the blood pressure cuff and gauge. Then inside this case, we'll have the pulse oximeter, thermometer, uh, eye dilation inserts. Um, there's one installed in the baby already, and there's a second one that comes in this bag. I uh, also have the uh, fontanelle uh, as well that you can add to the baby to give it a bulging fontanelle. There will be the reality scope, um, which comes with the trainer, and you will use it with a stethoscope in order to auscultate the baby as well as do blood pressure. And we have our tablet here, which is used to control uh, the baby and uh, all the other devices connected. So when we first pull everything out, the devices will not have any batteries, but we ship um, all the batteries that you'll need with it. You'll need to install the batteries in the baby, the pulse oximeter, the thermometer, and the blood pressure device. Um, we ship a screwdriver install uh, that comes with it. They can use to remove the covers on the thermometer and the blood pressure. The tablet and the reality scope charge uh, with a USB-C controller, and we ship chargers for both of them that come in their respective cases. For our software, we have 15 different uh, scenarios which have been written by pediatricians, um, uh, including, uh, but not limited to, the uh, normal vital signs, non accidental trauma, croup, uh, hypothermic newborn, bacterial pneumonia, along with several others. All right, so I've gone ahead and installed all the batteries uh, in the devices that need them, and I will now turn everything on. The tablet uh, will turn on. It's got a power button here on the side, so after we turn that on, we can go ahead and launch the Infant Vitals Trainer application, which will be right there on the home screen. So while that's launching, we'll go ahead and turn on all of the devices. Now the devices will come paired already to the tablet here. So you'll just have to turn it on and they will automatically connect and sync up with the tablet. All right. So once all the devices are connected, you'll be able to tell that they're connected as there'll be a bright blue uh, light signifying that it has been connected to the device. Um, you'll also be able to look on the application itself in the top corner uh, to see if all the devices are connected and working. I'll zoom in here uh, so you can see what's going on. All right, uh, here is the tablet that I'm just going to go ahead and show you. When you launch the application and all the devices connect, it will go ahead and bring you to this mode selection screen. Here you'll be able to select if uh, you're doing a practice or if you're going to be doing an assessment. So we're gonna just going to go ahead and go through the basic practice mode. So we'll go ahead and select practice. Um, and then here you will be presented with a list of the scenarios that are currently active. And then the uh, student can go ahead and select whatever scenario they wish to practice. So go ahead and just select one here. When you tap it, it will then start setting all the devices for the proper assessment. And when it's ready, it'll go ahead and show a small description. Then we can go ahead and we can tap the read more option here. All right. And when you read more, you'll be given all the detailed information about this scenario um, inside of uh, the practice mode. So in here, it'll list out the uh, temperature, what you're going to expect for oxygen saturation, as well as the heart rate, your diastolic systolic pressure, the breath rate, as well as it'll give you a view on what zones you can auscultate on the baby. Um, so you'll see it's got the upper and lower lobes on both lungs, front and back, as well as the bowels and the heart uh, there in the middle of the chest. Um, from this mode, you can also go ahead and hit this uh, play button down here, and you can listen through the tablet what the expected audio will be um, should you be in the correct zone with the reality scope. All right, so first thing we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and palpate for the pulses. We've got seven pulse locations here. 
We've got one in each arm. There's one in the thigh on each leg, as well as the foot on each leg. And then there is one on the continental piece up here. So what we can do is you can go ahead and palpate it and feel the pulse. Um, and here you can uh, look at a, a stopwatch or a clock or something and time the pulses to get the heart rate that way. You can go ahead and feel to make sure that we can feel all the pulses. And so what we can do is we can either calculate out the heart rate by counting them and watching a clock, or we can use our pulse oximeter here um, with the pulse band that's uh, that comes connected already to the baby. All you have to do is plug this into the bottom here, and we go ahead and you look. The information will go ahead and pop up, and we can read it and see that yep, we do have the proper uh, heart rate of 105 as well as the O2 saturation of 100. percent So that's good. So now we can go ahead and we can take the baby's temperature and we have three locations that you can take it either rectally or there's a in each armpit so go ahead and take out the diaper here if we wanted to do this way and you go ahead and take the thermometer you can stick it in the anal opening there to take the temperature rectally or we can go ahead and find uh, the armpit and we'll go ahead and put the uh, thermometer up there to get a reading. And we can watch here as the temperature will gradually rise, just like an actual thermometer. And when it stops, we can go ahead and look and we see 97.7, might be a little tough to see from there, but that's a normal temperature that we'd expect for a baby. Um, the thermometer also has a Fahrenheit to Celsius um, switcher. So you can go ahead and tap that and you'll see that the Celsius button then lights up and the uh, temperature will be displayed in Celsius. So now we have our temperature we go ahead and we will practice auscultation so we do not uh give you your own stethoscope uh students will provide their own stethoscope uh, for sanitary reasons but we have the reality scope here which will clip on to just about every stethoscope um we'll slide that into the clips right up there and using this we'll go ahead and listen to the lungs listen for normal breathing sounds or see if we can't notice anything odd that's happening. We can listen to the heart as well. Um, and the heart will also have the correct uh, beats per minute that you can count this way. Um, and to get the breaths per minute, you go ahead and you listen to the lungs and you're going to count uh, the number of breaths in a minute to get uh, to get the breaths per minute. And we can also listen to bowel sounds, make sure that we hear bowel sounds in all four quadrants, as we would expect. Um, and we can go ahead and flip the baby over, and we can listen to the lungs uh, from the back. That is how you will do basic auscultation. So we're going to take blood pressure next. So for blood pressure, we have our blood pressure cuff. Um, and it works just as it does in real life. We'll take um, blood pressure cuff. We will go ahead and just do it on this arm here. And the blood pressure cuff does have little arrows that shows uh, where line up with the artery. Um, that we'll wrap it around the upper portion of the arm as high up as we can go. I want to make sure that it's fully around. Then what we'll do is we will take blood pressure as we normally would. We will use our reality scope to listen uh, just below the blood pressure cuff for the corticoff sounds. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead uh, to demonstrate it. I'll just prop it up here. We'll demonstrate it um, by um, zero, clip it tight. We'll push the blood pressure over and then we'll slowly lower it down until we start hearing the Kordakoff sounds. It'll go through the four phases and then it'll stop. And so that'll give us our systolic and diastolic uh, blood pressure readings. All right, and uh, that is how you will go through and take the basic uh, vital signs. Um, we can also practice uh, umbilical cord care uh, here, as well as we can also look at the eyes, make sure that there's no obvious signs of trauma or, or um, any other conditions by making sure that the pupils are properly dilated. I will now show you how we will set up the assessments for the students to go through. All right, so we're going to go ahead and close out of the application here, just as you would. Have. So to get into the admin mode to set up uh, assessments and practices, we'll launch the application. And while it's in here, we'll go ahead and press the star down on the RealityWorks uh, symbol. The screen will turn uh, teal blue color. 
That'll let you know that you are now in admin mode. So when you're in admin mode, it'll take you directly to the sites and conditions setup. So in here, you'll see there's two tabs for the practice and assessment. At this point, uh, the instructor may go ahead and disable or enable certain scenarios. For instance, if they only want students to focus on a select few of scenarios in practice, they can go ahead and turn off any of the scenarios by tapping them down here. The check mark will show whether the scenario is enabled or disabled. We can go over to the assessment section. And now the assessment section, if you've used some of our other products, is set up very similar to those in this that you will set the specific order that the assessments will go in. They'll go from top to bottom. So we'll start at the top and go one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, all the way down. Here you can turn off specific scenarios. So if you wanted to set the difficulty, you can determine how many scenarios will show up, specific scenarios. Uh, if you wanted to, you could let your students know what scenarios to look out for, or you could tell them absolutely nothing if you wanted to really test them. Um, if you go in the top corner up here, click on these three dots, you have a couple options here. Um, you can go ahead and randomize the current list so that it's not uh, in the top to bottom or so that it's not in the specific uh, order that it comes preset in. So you can do that so that students can't just memorize what order that things come in. So you go ahead and hit randomize current list and it'll go ahead and shuffle everything. And at this point, uh, you as the instructor would write down what scenario um, comes first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, et cetera, so that when the students go through, you have something to check against to see if they got everything correct. Um, and if you want to manually move things around, you can just hold on one of them and you can move it up or down um, on the list uh, if you want to set up a specific order. Something to note, there are two scenarios that are disabled by default. Um, and those are the scenarios that require the bulging pot now, as well as the other eyepiece, the one that has the dilated right pupil. As those assessments and practices will require you to manually put those in, we have those disabled by default so that you don't have to worry about that. But if you want to practice them on that, you will just have to note uh, when you set it up that you will have to install the fontanelle as well as the eye. And if you turn on one of those, for instance, meningitis, uh, so if we try to enable that, we'll see if we get a little pop-up here. Tough to read it, but I'll just go ahead and read what it says. Um, it says there's hardware required. Debulging fontanelle needs to be inserted for this scenario. Please refer to the guide for instructions. So that's a little way for you to know that if you want to truly have that scenario on, you're going to make need to make a note that the instructor or the student will need to install the bulging fontanelle for that specific scenario. Um, and that message will show up in the uh, practice section as well when they read about these uh, the description for that scenario so that the student knows that they need to put that uh, hardware in if they are going to be practicing that specific scenario. Uh, so from here, we're going to go ahead and exit the admin menu. And then when we get down, we can show you what assessment looks like. So assessment, all the, the uh, student will see in the assessment is they'll just see that this is scenario number one. Now they will not know what scenario this is. They'll have to go ahead and write down the vital signs that they discover by taking the temperature, blood pressure, etc. Um, they'll have to write that down on a sheet and we have that sheet available. Um, you can look at our website and the curriculum links um, to print off that sheet um, that students will use then for taking the assessments. And so they'll go through all of the assessments here, one, number two, et cetera, going all the way down for however many there are and they'll have to write in what uh, values they found. And then you can go through and you can grade them to see um, how accurate they were in taking their assessment. So that is the assessment mode. All right, in the event that you have to repair a device, um, I'll go ahead and walk you through how to do that here on this paired devices screen. So to get to the screen, you either tap on the devices at the top, um, or if you click on this menu right here, you can find the device connections uh, screen. So you tap that option, and it'll bring you here to the uh, pairing or device connection screen, which will show you the devices that are connected. Um, and this is how we'll repair something. So I'll go ahead and repair the, the pulse ox here. Um, you'll have to press the pairing button, and the blue LED will then begin to flash. Um, and the device will now show up down here. Go ahead and hit the add button to that. We'll then get a message up here that we can hit pair and connect. Um, we'll have to go ahead and hit pair again to get the device to pair, and then it'll get added to the list right there and ready to go. 
That is how we will prepare a device. Um, and to identify any devices, uh, for instance, if you have multiple infant vital signs trainers um, next to each other and you get the reality scopes mixed up or you've got the pulse oximeter and you're not sure which one goes where, there, um, on the side here, there's a little magnifying glass option to find it. We'll select the thermometer here. Um, we'll find the device that we're looking for the thermometer. We'll tap the icon and you can see that the all the, the battery LEDs will begin flashing. So we'll go ahead and do that again. See that they become flashing so that you'll be able to pick out which device is connected to this specific uh, tablet. And that is how that works. The Infant Vital Science Trainer curriculum comes with four lessons. In Introduction to Infant Auscultation, Introduction to Infant Blood Pressure, Introduction to Infant Vital Signs, and Newborn Assessment. So in total, this is about six hours of teaching time. You will get detailed steps and activities along with the um, expected time and the materials needed along, and the student handouts for the full curriculum. The curriculum also includes pre and post assessments along with PowerPoint slides that you can use uh, while giving your instructions. So if you have any questions or would like to receive more information, please use the information on the screen and we'll be happy to help. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.